this video we're going to be breaking down in depth kind of the tournament between Henry and Wesley uh, for the Madden Bowl final. This tournament is basically the Super Bowl of Madden 23 or Madden 24 for Comp Madden. And I'm uh, going to be just taking a look in depth at just kind of what I would call the final form of this game. A couple storylines going into this game that we want to just quickly address. Uh, first and foremost is that Henry, if he wins this game, will become the first Madden millionaire. Uh, Wesley is trying to avenge his loss to Henry really back in Madden 22. Madden 22, uh, both of these guys were actually, uh, I don't know if they were roommates, but they lived in the same apartment complex, ended up playing each other in the Madden Bowl. Next thing you know, Henry moved out, and, um, and Henry ended up winning that game. It was a real tight game and really kind of came down to some really, um, I, I would say, like 50-50 plays. There was one specific catch that Wesley could have had, but he didn't uh, end up being able to make that catch and end up causing – um, kind of the game to swing in Henry's favor. So uh, Wesley, for the last literally two years, has been trying to get back to the stage. He gets back to the stage, and he's going to play Henry for uh, $250,000. Winner of this game gets $250,000. But also, like I said, uh, Henry would become the first Mad Millionaire. Wesley would be going over, I think, $750,000, which is no small feat in of itself. Now, playbooks, uh, real quick, both of these guys are in the Colts offensive playbook. And both of these guys are in the Chiefs' defensive playbook. You're going to see Dollar on defense as the main defense, and then you're going to see 6-1 in the red zone. We have both of those full ebooks available for you guys on our Patreon, my versions of those, um, completely updated throughout the year. So if you guys want to get access to that, that's linked in the Patreon, and the link to sign up for that is going to be down in the description below. All right, let's get into this. Henry gets ball first, five-minute quarters. This is a full live final. Um, I will say... Madden, uh, Comp Madden has never been in a better spot. This was an awesome event. I was really impressed by the Madden Bowl, and I hope they build off this going into next year. All right. So first play, Henry runs the ball. Why does he run the ball? Because he wants to get on a hash mark, right? These guys don't really like to pass the ball in the middle of the field. They want to be on a hash mark. It provides better spacing for their routes. Um, that is the primary reason why uh, you're going to see this. Now, um, again, dollar. Now, one of the things that's really want to point out first – Wesley, in every tournament game before this, he would basically back this guy to about right here and then would mainly primarily be sending a five-man blitz like this, okay? He gets to the finals. This guy will be pressed the majority of the tournament for both teams, which is kind of interesting, um, and, and I'll explain why as we go through this. So uh, second down and nine, and let's see what the route combo is for Henry. He's going to go to this new route combo, I believe, um, you can tell a lot in the first game. So first and foremost, you get this double team right here. Uh, this is really important. This is the whole reason why this guy is going to still be pressed. The main way to pick up the blitz. So like, let's say we were sending this five-man pressure. This right here is the pass protection for the A-gap blitz. The double team on this defensive tackle typically is going to be, he's going to get double teamed right here. The running back is going to step up and block this guy, or the running back is going to step to the side and block this guy. Okay, what we what we start to see uh, as kind of a, a a counter to the counter is we're going to see more DB fire. Where if this defender double teams here, then this guy will come in free off of the edge. So it's kind of fascinating to me how uh, they adapted to this blitz. Um, another thing is this route combination. This is the play curl flat out of bunch offset it's got a little bit of a deeper corner route and notice that henry is putting a hot route master corner right here now this is a short side concept if this is a cover three that cover three is going to go guard the deeper corner route if this is a hard flat there's this little window where we can throw this little short corner so uh, we haven't seen that dot much this year um, again from short side we've only seen that from wide side so really interesting and kind of a cool little combo because we also know that we can attack this sideline over here with a C route. Um, and so there's just a, it just, it adds a little depth to your offense being able to do this. So I did want to break down just kind of some of the coverage stuff. So we see here, first and foremost, DB Fire 2. And then we're going to get a little cloud. We're going to get a half, a third, a third, and then uh, a vert hook. And the user is really taking this entire section of space. So again, if you take a look at this double team, See how we get this double team here? So now this guy is going to come in free. That's why you have to block your running back, which Henry does end up doing. 
So he's able to pick up the pressure. Let's see if this will load. I don't know why this does this. When we do these breakdowns. I download the video and everything. Where it's literally frozen. Awesome. Okay, here we go. We're back. Um, so anyway, he goes to this combo. And we'll take a look at Wesley's, uh, where we talked about his defensive adjustments. So you see at this point right here, this blitz is picked up. The thing about DB Fire 2, it gets a lot of really interesting disengages and sheds. So the pressure is always going to be really good, in my opinion. You see here, he's fighting through. At this point, you could throw this. I'm kind of surprised that Henry didn't throw this route more. I don't know if he knows something about the way that this is going to play. But it's kind of I feel like this window is open if we're looking at that. But I think he's looking here off snap. He sees user go here. So now it's either the tight end if he carries the drag or if the user rolls back to that, then he probably hits the drag right at that little window. So you'll see. See how the user's here. Now we have a ton of space to be able to throw this right in here. Again, I think this corner is open, but I haven't ran that route combo at all this year. So I, he would, Henry would obviously know better than I do. All right, first and 10. Uh, good first play. Get a look at kind of what Wesley's going to be doing defensively. Get a look at what Henry's going to be doing defen or offensively. And now we're going to go to uh, this little bunch nasty. Now, this is the main – if you were to ask me what's the main reason to be in Colts, it's really for this formation, I feel like. I mean, you just see people run this a lot. Um, and so, so anyways, let's uh, – Let's get into it. So there was the that was the, the Travis Kelsey uh, catch, and he's going to go to this play wide trail. Now the way that Henry runs this again, you see the double team here. Okay, so this is a and this is really important. Watch this. So here's a double team. Now Henry or Wesley actually goes to coverage. Had Wesley sent DB fire, it would have come in. All right, because he didn't block his running back. Now uh, the route combo. We're running wide trail. We've got this post route. This post route has been the gift that keeps on giving this year. It's one of the best post routes in the game. And then you have this little uh, really triangular concept. We're looking at this window here. We have this window here. And really this window here. Obviously, you have a flat out here and a deep post. But it really becomes kind of a triangle the way it's going to be kind of factored out. And Wesley ends up running, um, I think almost this, this to me looks just like a basic, uh, I don't know if it's cover four or not, but kind of a simple defense. And again, right here, we can throw this. It's almost like this guy uh, was cross man, I believe, on the running back. So he gets a man up on the running back. That's to try to take away the running back streaks. But you see here, if this guy's down, if he does not get, you see how this guy's shedding? If he does not get this shed, this is a touchdown over the top. But again, this is why pressure is always a factor, and it's really one of the X factors defensively. So you see, he takes this. And then uh, this little hook curl is going to take this trail. And then this cross man is going to do a really good job on the ghost route. So there's really no option. But we do have this open if we have time in the pocket and ends up not happening for us. And so he's going to have to throw the ball away. And it brings up a second down and 10. Now notice, uh, real quick pro tip, all these guys um, at this point in the year, uh, like I said, I think Madden's reached kind of its like final form you got to have Doug Williams. Doug Williams is key. And really, here's the thing. You want traditional four. Traditional four release. That's the Lamar Jackson release. That is the best release in the game. So if you can get set feet lead, uh, gun slinger, my handwriting's terrible on this, and then hot route master. That's what you want. Those abilities. And then if you can get gift wrap, gift wrap is nice as well. That's what you're, That's the ability stack. Really does not matter what other abilities you have on your team right now. You just need that quarterback with traditional for release, gunslinger, set feet lead, um, and then Hara Master. Now he's going to go to this combo. So okay. So this is out of curl flat as well. But now we're going to get a little bit of a different concept. And that concept is when we're running this with the. You see how the bunch is to the wide side here. It's really the same concept, but it's going to attack a little differently. So we get a clear out. We're going to get this deep corner. What's that deep corner going to do? This outside third is going to have to roll back to take that. This middle third is going to have to roll to the side to take that. So now it isolates this defender. If this defender does not, um, I mean, really, it's almost impossible for this defender to defend this route because he's not backed up. So what we have here is basically we're really keying this guy. If he goes back, 
we're going to throw. So let me explain that. So if this, again, this is the route combination. Okay, so this defender is irrelevant. He can't get back there even if he's on a 30-yard cloud flat because he will not drop fast enough to, and horizontally enough to get to that pocket where we're trying to hit those X's that I marked. So we're really looking at this guy. If he drops like this, then we're going to throw R1. Normally he'll drop deeper, and then you're going to throw uh, X underneath. So if the user runs over here, let's say, then that's why we have this little backside drag, and we can really throw this anywhere in that window. Okay, this is this is truly one of the best route combos in the game. It also allows you to block six, uh, which is really nice, and it's a great way to attack the wide side of the field this year. So you see, uh, Wesley sends four. He's got a third. He's got a little hook curl here, probably a curl flat or hard flat, probably a third, a third. And I mean, automatically, as soon as Henry sees this guy move like that and the user does not get out here a little faster, it's automatic, like right here, watch the user. See how the user's not, he's not getting out here. He's kind of staying in the middle. So his eyes go, he looks here. Once he sees this guy is drifting into a third zone, he's not squatting into a cloud, then he knows, he knows, now I'm looking here. I see user kind of takes this drag. So my throw is always over here which is exactly what he does. And even though the user is kind of tracking him, the user is late on that. And uh, Henry's able to make the right read and keep the ball moving. Really, really nice route combo. One of the best route combos. If you can understand that route combination, it will instantly make you a better Madden player. We have it out of a lot of different playbooks. Now he's going to go to Dagger. This, in my opinion, is Henry's favorite play. Um, up until this point in the tournament, he loves this play. So let's talk about why this is a, a really, really good play. So we have this cross. Now, in my opinion, this crosser is the worst route on the play and the hardest route to throw consistently. So if you want someone to throw something, to me, you want them to throw the crosser. But you have this snap throw uh, streak where we're really looking right here. So in this defense, we know we're going to get this blitzer a lot of times. This defender... It almost doesn't matter what he's on. He really has a hard time because you see how he's got, see how this guy has inside leverage? See how there's this little gap right here? So if this guy's in a yellow zone, you can actually throw the ball kind of right in this little window here. So what we're really looking keen on is this defender. If this defender comes down like this, then we can't throw the streak. But we then will turn our eyes over here to see if we can hit the crosser, okay? If this defender rolls to the middle like this, as long as the user stays in the middle, then there is a massive, massive window to throw to throw this. So that's kind of the, the read here. So we'll, we'll kind of stop. Okay, so you see this guy blitzes. Automatically, this is open. Henry knows that. He's really, so he's he sees this. He's probably, his eyes are probably looking right here because the user is turning his momentum inward like this. We know this throw is open. And so this is just a master class of um, being able to read, make really good reads uh, with your plays and get the most out of your plays by making the most amount of reads possible. Really, really nice read. First and 10. He goes to this. This is a red zone dot from him. Um, this is actually a really good play, but he ends up getting screamed at. Again, I've talked about it, but you get this double team here. He ends up blocking this tight end because he wants to send the running back on a wheel and what he's trying to do is he's trying to either hit this corner or he's trying to hit this corner. So he's trying to really attack the deep sideline on both sides or intermediate sideline. Wesley sends five because he sends this guy off the edge and this is not a run. This guy is on the right. This guy comes in free. And so it ends up messing up the play. The play is actually wide open. You see, if this pressure is not here, R1 is a touchdown, 100% out of 100 times. You see him beating into the corner. Henry's trying to roll out and throw it, but this guy, it's, this pressure gets on him just quick enough that he ends up having to throw the ball away. Unfortunate for Henry, he got a lot of these this game. He does get an intentional grounding on that, which is kind of weird to me. Um, I feel like intentional groundings have been bad in Madden for a while. But now uh, let's take a look. So second down and 20, and... 
What's the route combo here? He goes to this. Okay, so he's trying to do basically the same thing, except the difference is he's going to now use a double post post. So he's really looking for this double post post. He's got a little block and release with a little drag underneath to the tight end. And then this wheel route, this wheel in uh, C route. Again, to me, I I'm not sure why this is the call. I think just trying to attack a different part of the field. But this block tight end really has not been effective uh, from what I've seen. It's at least that it's on the right. So you see here, Wesley ends up sending four, okay? And then coverage, uh, the coverage he ends up running is a little cloud, a deep cloud flat. So Wesley's kind of trying to take away this sideline. He's trying to take that away. And then basically he's going to use her. And in this, all you have to really use her is you have to just use her this post route over the middle and basically midpoint between that and the tight end. So what you end up seeing, see how this guy's getting out here? So this guy is kind of in the window where we would probably try to throw this. Now, if he doesn't get screamed at, this is open to the sideline. This is open here. Um, this is open over the middle probably. So there's a lot. I think Henry's actually trying to throw this as he's getting blitzed. Again, ends up almost almost throwing a D-line pick there. I mean, um, good defense from Wesley. So it brings up this third and 20 situation. This is probably one of the plays of the tournament, plays of the game, and um, something to kind of think through. Now, what I don't understand uh, that Henry does here on this route combo, I love this route combo. So we have a clear out streak. This is how to speed dig. He puts a hot route master crosser on this guy. Uh, the reason why he does this is to get the depth so that he could throw that either right here or all the way over here. Those are the two points at which this can be thrown. And what the coverage Henry's probably expecting is he's probably expecting a lot of pressure, so he's going to block his running back. I'm really not sure the purpose of the corner other than if you got like a cover three, this dig probably pulls that third in just enough and you can throw that on the sideline. Um, so if you, I think, I think he's doing that. Uh, I'm just not sure a hundred percent what the purpose of the corner is, uh, or just maybe to try to disguise the combo. Um, but anyway, so third and 20 Wesley goes with a max pressure. So he's sending one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So this is DB fire two. So what we have is a third, a middle third, and then we have this, uh, this flat zone. So the purpose of this flat zone is he's probably anticipating that curl flat corner, but he's going to get this back and play, basically play the sticks with this. And then this guy is kind of coming over top in case there's any fade. So this is, it's actually, I think is cover three cloud because we have the third here. So it's, it's not terrible defense. It's basically cover three cloud. This guy's an outside third. Anyway, the point is now the user's in problem. I mean, we're at, at this point right now, just based off of this look, we know that this yellow zone will not play this section of grass. So what we're looking for is, does the user carry the crosser to here? If the user comes back to the middle of the field, then we're going to throw the crosser right there. If the user stays and goes this direction, then we're looking to throw this backside dig route right in that little window right there. So this is just ends up being a, a little bit of a, a little bit of bad pressure, not a lot of pressure here. And then also kind of just, in my opinion, um, a bad situational defense to me, maybe a bad user. There's a lot of ways we could look at this, but it ends up being a really, really nice window. Throws that and gets gets it. I mean, that's huge for, for Henry. So first and goal in the red zone. Uh, Henry ends up basically in this, in this wing stack, and I think he comes out in tight way off maybe with a jet sweep threat. But his plan is to audible into this wing stack and this C route here to the right. Um, but really, that window right there, great throw. And really nothing much to that. It's just the main thing here is the way a lot of people have been playing uh, to try to stop bubble screens is this guy being a hard flat, this guy being a hard flat, this guy being a vert hook, vert hook, and they'll shade underneath. 
Then this guy will be in a kind of a curl flatter cloud over the top here. And then we'll get a send four. And with the user kind of hanging, the user kind of hanging in the middle. So what we're anticipating is these underneath routes. But what it doesn't cover, and this is why it's a really good uh, route, it doesn't cover this back back pylon. And so you'll see here. All right, so right here we get that. So we get hard flat, hard flat, vert hook, vert hook. Um, this is a hard window, but because of the window, the window now becomes open right here because this guy vacates the area, and it ends up being just a really nice throw and catch for Henry. And that is um, that's his first drive on offense. All right, so now we're going to take a look at Wesley. Uh, Wesley kind of does the same, plays very similar similarly uh, to Henry, a little bit more robotic. Uh, so anyways, Wesley comes out, runs the ball first play. Now he's in the second seven. Wesley is going to go to his best plays early. So he goes to this. This is his favorite play in the game. Um, you see Wesley run this a ton, a ton, a ton. Okay. Um, essentially what we have here is the running back wheel. We know if, if running back wheels ran to the wide side, if this guy is in a third, that running back wheel is gonna is gonna clear that third out, and you can throw the corner route. You can throw the corner route right there. Okay. We also so as the coverage we're anticipating is basically this right here, and then we're sending. You know, we're probably anticipating either a five man pressure uh, with the flat and a, and the user right here. It's probably what we're anticipating. It ends up being a little different, kind of similar. But basically what we get is, again, the double team. So you see here any pass protection. But we're going to send five, but he's lurking on this defensive end with lurk artist. So this is his favorite coverage for Wesley. All game long, he's in this coverage. This is the coverage he loves. Uh, the purpose of the blitz also is to help keep the quarterback. This is an underrated component of this blitz but the underrated component of this blitz is you can't roll out of this typically this year so you have to stay in the pocket unless you're able to block this guy you have to stay in the pocket so that takes this throw here and makes it a thousand times harder because you can't roll out and throw it so that's a big big point the other thing is this little hook curl right here will play this tight end post. So all Henry has to use her is really this backside drag right there. Okay? So snap the ball. And you see he ends up throwing here. Or actually just throws it away. Yeah, because he sees it's dead from, from, from the rip. So that's going to bring up third down and seven. Again, you learn a lot on the first couple drives of how uh, each, each uh, player is going to play. I don't love this combo. Um, he goes to dagger, and basically he's going to clear this streak out, and then he's going to have this crosser, and then he's going to have essentially a kind of a trail concept. And Henry ends up kind of um, right here, kind of just going to a little different defense. It's just basic DB fire, uh, too. But again, notice the key for Henry. He always wants a yellow zone in this window uh, for this offense. So all Henry really has to do, and this actually ends up being a great, I mean, a great turnout for Wesley here. All Henry has to do is carry this and then take the crosser across. And this play is basically bagged. Um, Wesley ends up kind of getting more bang for his buck than you would have thought um, on that play. All right, so first and 10, ball on the 35-yard line, left hash mark. And, again, Henry goes back to his main defensive strategy. And I believe Wesley goes back to his, too. This might be just straight dagger here. Nope, mesh spot. Look at the look at the combo. I told you, this is, this is the play that he wants to run. Okay, so how's Henry going to stop this? We're not going to let him roll out with these two slot corners, okay? Um, and then we are going to use her right here. So what this is, this allows us to do is we have a hook curl, middle third, third, 
So all Henry has to use her, honestly, he really doesn't even have to use her anything, but he really, you know, maybe takes the backside drag. But he's really carrying the tight end until the tight end goes across. Once the tight end goes across, he's going to bite down on the drag. It's pretty much what his plan probably is. So you see this hard flat really takes this wheel out of the picture as well. So you see his user's here. He sees he's getting that. Look at the user. What's he guarding? Right in here. Takes that away. Puck, it's collapsing. And honestly, Wesley gets a great scramble. Um, that's incredible pocket management. But really, it's this is this is this is as good a defense as you can play against this. I mean, this is absolutely incredible defense. So because Wesley knows that he's kind of getting this, he's going to go for a bomb. The problem is we're sending a lot of people. Henry's sending a lot of people here. So he ends up going um, kind of back to the same defense. And what you'll see is this defender has mid-zone KO. So if he hits anything down here, he'll KO the route. Um, this guy has deep end-zone KO as well. So in this situation, this is actually a really nice, it's going to be hard to stop this play. But really, this is going to be open late, okay, provided you can have time. And then the user is going to have to take the tight end, so he's going to take that. And then we're really looking for this deep post. But again, you have to have time for this, and that is what makes this. So you see here, see this throw? And this is mid zone right here. Mid zone lights up, knocks it out. Really nice. So you see how... Henry is leveraging the pressure and the coverage together uh, to play some really, really good defense. So you see, see this double team here? So the purpose of the double team right here is Wesley's going to try to roll out. So we'll show you here again. Now he goes to this. So this is a variation of the main setup that, that Wesley was running, and it's actually a really good adjustment to what Henry was doing. This is where these games start to get really interesting. So, um, basically, this was the covered shell. Okay, and then this guy was in a flat, and the user's over here. So, it's almost impossible for the user to cover this flat. So, what Wesley does, it's actually smart, is he's going to put this guy on a flat, because if this guy blitzes, this guy bails, and if this guy comes here, there's a lot of open space over here. So that's what Wesley ends up choosing to do here. And you see, this is wide open, really nice read. And now Wesley has to, or Henry has to respect the fact that he might throw that. And really, if I was Wesley, I would have ran that a lot more. I feel like um, that was open a lot more this game, but it's not his main stuff, right? It's not his main stuff. So if it's not his main stuff, he's not going to, he's not going to run it. Anyway, mid zone, same exact coverage shell, same exact adjustments. And watch the user here. So the user takes this little underneath. Really, really good defense. And here we are, second and 16. All right, so second and 16. Ball on 46-yard line goes to Dagger. Real quick, this is a different variation of the coverage. Um, so this is important uh, to just understand. So this is a situation in the game. Henry is anticipating, and this is actually a really big part of defense, to anticipate what your opponent is calling and then being able to counter that. So from the same look, please, please, um, I know we're about 30 minutes into the video, but it's so important that you make everything look the same. Um, Henry is paying a significant price to make everything look identical defensively, and I'll talk about that as the video goes on. Anyway, right here, he's anticipating that Dagger is a play call. So he's going to go to a cross man or a man defense, really. So he's going to man this guy up here. Okay. And then we're still going to have this little. Um, so you see here, there's a man up right here. There's a man up on circle. And then really from there, as you can see, he's going to leave that three rack. This is a maximum coverage. He only ends up blitzing two people, which is really actually kind of shocking to me. Does he only blitz two? What's, hook, what's this guy doing? No, he blitz his three. Okay. So this is still a max coverage. So this guy's manned up. This guy's manned up. What does that do? It allows this outside quarter to play a crosser better. So if he runs dagger, all Henry really has to do is take the tight end over the middle. So this ends up being really, really great coverage. Um, you see, see here, and I guess Henry's anticipating to take the crosser. 
I would have let him throw the crosser because I've got I it, typically when you man up somebody, then the zone will play a little bit more uh, like this guy doesn't matter. So I, I mean I understand why, but he ends up taking that and Wesley ends up throwing that. I would have liked to see Henry play a little more aggressive here because I feel like again, and I'll say this I'll say this a ton. This throw is a really hard throw this year. It really is. It can get. There's a lot of things. I see so many people throw picks on that throw. Obviously, this is Wesley, so he's going to be able to make that throw. But I would have. I would have liked to see Henry play a little more aggressive on the in route right there. Um, but anyway, still good defense. I think he was just thinking play conservative, get him on a third down, try to make a play. Now, right here, this is his third down defense. Um, as I watch this film back again and again, I start to see. You start to notice. This is his third down. So his basic plan on third down is to put his user as a, a basically a robber. His user has this entire middle of the field, and he's going to send everybody. He's going to send um, – well, actually, I think in this case, he only sends this pressure. Anyway, the point is these guys are in yellow zones, and they're going to come down right in here. So this is going to take away a lot of the underneath stuff that people like to throw out of things like smash return and all that. So as we look at this here, see how see how aggressively these guys come down. That's to take away those little underneath underneath drags. Anything underneath is basically dead here. He ends up bluff blitzing this guy as well, or or spying him so that there's no rollout. You can't go anywhere as a quarterback. Then the other. So again, as you see, his users here. He's relying on these thirds to KO corner routes basically. And if you look at this, it just I feel like he was anticipating that tight end post. You gotta gotta get back on this streak, in my opinion, because if he gets back on this streak, I mean, at this point, yes, this is open, but this is still KO. You give yourself a better chance. He's trying to get back on it. He's just late with his user. That's completely dead with these uh, these underneath zones, and Wesley ends up getting seven. But that is that is Henry's you know short yardage, uh, short yardage defense basically. But both people get seven on the first drive. I'd say Henry looked a little better um, just off the first drive. And then you get this. First down and 10, you get the peanut punch fumble animation. Very fortunate that he keeps the ball. And he goes back to one of his favorite plays. This is a short side bunch. Please hear me. This is short side. This is curl flat. And what we're looking for, and you'll see it right here, what does Wesley do? He goes third. He goes third. He goes third. OK, so now watch this. Watch this dot. This is what this is what Wesley or Henry cooked up. This is uh, and you haven't really seen this all year, uh, this this specific way. This is even a, a, a curl flat or cloud flat. But once this guy bends, we're looking to throw this ball right here. And we trust that this corner is going to clear it out just enough. See, it's just enough. See how he's going in the corner just enough to open this window. And it's going to be a possession catch on the sideline, and he catches it. That's a really, really good dot. I'm definitely adding that into my my scheme uh, moving forward for sure, uh, because you don't. It's a great way to be able to attack that sideline short side. Um, so anyway, here we go. So we're going to have uh, this play is kind of a constraint play for for Henry, but basically, what I'm not sure why he goes to this. Other than like maybe he was anticipating pressure, I don't know, but essentially this is going to be wide open. You see right there, it's open, but gets screamed at again, and ends up throwing the ball away. So really, Henry has had everything he wants offensively open. This is another important point, unless he's pressured. So defensively, if you're going to play good defense in Madden, you have to put pressure on your opponent, and you can do that a variety of different ways. But you notice some of the main reasons Wesley's been able to get get uh, stops is due to his ability to put pressure on the opponent. Here he goes to double post. I don't love this play call. Um, I think this is just a again just a constraint theory play for Henry. It's not a main main play for him. Wesley loves this cover through cloud. You see a lot of this cover through cloud, but he's sending everybody out of this. So he goes cover through cloud. This is basically his plan to take away double corner. Because we have this cloud here, which is fine defense for it. Um, and it frees up the user to basically take this backside. Double post, the route combo. What does Henry actually go with? A fade. He's got the double post post. 
He's got this tied in wheel and then he's got a little Texas pattern. So off rip, he sees this guy bail. This is open. But again, you see this animation. This happens all the time when people blitz. It's another reason to blitz. You see these little bumps and stuff that happens and it delays the route a little bit and probably fewer yards than Henry would have gotten. Still puts him in a decent situation. Third down and two. Henry is such a good passer, um, and, and he does a really good job of just taking he, – he just takes his, his open reads, right? He, he master, he's mastered, like, making the progressions, taking the first guy open, and just continuing to move the ball. Here goes to an RPO. Um, these guys never throw the bubble screen. I think what he does is he looks out here. He sees this guy is, like, on a flat. So he's just going to hand the ball off, gets out, and really puts himself in a great position here. So at this point in the game so far, pretty much as advertised, as expected, you both players are playing pretty good. Um, Henry is about to go up. I In his head, he's about to go up 14-7. to seven. So this is his play. This is out of that wing stack. This is that power O. So what's he looking for here? What he's really looking for is this. He wants this guy to block here. He ends up blocking here. And then he wants this point guard to kind of come in and block the user. Uh, and then he wants to kind of take it right in this little window. Unfortunately, this guy doesn't block him and he gets stopped. Okay, that's fine. Second and goal. I feel like he draws up one of the worst route combinations I've ever seen against a good player. And I, I'm not super critical of Henry a lot. I'm going to be critical right here. Um, and again, obviously, best Madden player of all time. Everything is everything. Oh, that's true. He goes to this, and I just don't. I mean, we know that in 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 this defense, you're basically going to get yellow zone. Like, I don't know what he was looking for. And you see, like hard flat. Yellow zone. Little three wreck. I mean, right here, the play's dead. You gotta throw this away. There's nothing open. I mean, there's literally what's open here. I'm gonna let it run a little more. In this picture, what can you throw? <laughs> what can you honestly throw? Henry, I mean, look at all the help Wesley has to the left. Wesley knows that this is a good user because what Wesley's gonna do is he's gonna peek here and then he's gonna actually carry triangle across. So if you watch, watch Wesley's user here. See how he's kind of freezing? But he's never taking this tight end because look at all of the help he has. He has three jerseys right here. He knows his responsibility. Again, do your job. It's a big part of defense. you got to know your user responsibility. He's going to take this and carry it right in this middle of the field. Ends up doing that perfectly. Ah, just, you just can't throw that, man. Uh, uh, that's tough. And I don't love the route combination. Like, if you're going to run this, this is fine. What I would have done is I would have hitched here. I would have put the tight end on a tight end apprentice post. Then you can. Then that's actually a threat over there. Um, the way it was drawn up, it just was really not a good combo, in my opinion, to begin with. He must have been expecting Wesley to play a different style of defense based off of how Henry scored last drive. But to me, uh, that was probably Henry's biggest mistake, maybe of the entire Madden 24 season. Um, uh, that just, it just wasn't a great route combination, uh, in my opinion. I mean, you just see, I mean, there's just no threat to the left. Oh, no, I just feel like you can't, I just feel like you can't do that in a game of this magnitude. So Wesley goes to this. So I want to talk about this play. So, uh, please under, please take a look here. So the ball's on the right hash mark and we're kind of getting into a very critical part of the game because, Wesley only has – he can easily clock the game out, which is what he's going to try to do. So second and one, he's going to try to run the ball, get it to the two-minute warning, ends up doing that, gets it third and one. We're going to go to the two-minute warning, and, and now we're a third and one. Wesley can clock this out, and Wesley gets ball at halftime. He could potentially be up 21-7. to seven. If Wesley – Wesley's mental is probably saying the next time Henry touches the ball, it should be 21-7. to seven. Ends up getting a nice run. Gets out of there, and uh, we start to get moving. Now, this is one of the reasons why I feel like double post is not um, – it's just one of those plays. Uh, okay, so here he's going to dagger. 
This is really good defense from West or from Henry. KO. That should have been a KO. It doesn't KO. You see, when Henry touches his nose, I feel like low key, he's kind of frustrated. That's him like getting a little fired up. Could be wrong. Anyway, here we go. Mesh spot. I mean, Wesley just keeps calling this play. It's just not there. Yeah, mid zone. I mean, it's not. He has the, the crazy part is you talk about game planning for your opponent and making your opponent play left handed. Wesley has called mesh this this exact setup um, with one distinction. This play, and I talked about it in the other breakdowns you can see on the channel. He has called this play. This guy normally is on a drag. This this play right here is probably seventy percent of his plays in the MCS tournament in the Madden Bowl. Henry came out here and absolutely shut it down, and he ran this defense the majority of the game. So what does it force him to do? You really only have that right there. Henry's willing to let him throw stuff like that. He just wants to make sure we're not throwing any of these four routes. If you think about, about this, the hook curl takes away the tight end post. The um, the uh, the blitz of, of this plus the adjustments takes away the corner. And then the user is able to just lurk in the middle of the field. So this is this is this is a big big piece of game planning for your opponent, understanding your opponent's tendencies, saying, okay, what do they do? How can I take that away? Here you see again perfect defense. Here I would love to see a sack there. I feel like Wesley. I don't know. Just I just feel like he kind of got fortunate that that was not as bad of a loss as it was. Brings up this third and thirteen situation. So. Uh, Wesley goes to this route combination. I want to touch on this. I hate this route combo. Um, a lot of these Colts guys will run this. In my opinion, I would categorize this as a lazy route combo. And the reason why is because they they what they're trying to do is they're trying to, in a roundabout way, use this crosser to clear out this outside third and then throw this right here. Now, I don't know 100% what Henry's actual adjustments are. But what I would say is, if you watch this, all game long, and I'm pretty sure this is an outside third, okay? Pretty much all game long, it's been an outside third, okay? Over here, probably a quarter, and then probably a third, and then probably a little shaded down hook curl. And then this, I think this ends up being a, Look at this third down a little closer. This ends up being a man up here. I'm not sure why. I guess because he's thinking I don't need to defend the flat. Okay, at this point, I want you to look over here to this left side. This is a terrible read. But basically what, what Wesley's trying to do is he's saying, okay, this guy is going to pull this guy just a little bit to the left, and it's going to leave this massive void open for me to hit that route. To me, and you see very clearly it does not do that. Okay, now why could that be? Let's back up the let's back up the, the, the play here. And let me see if I'm telling you right here. Let me get this back to Yeah. Okay. So he does call it on the right hash for that to happen. If this was on this right hash, it would never happen. You could Henry could have put this guy on a deep half. I don't think he did. I think this is just a third, and I just honestly think it's a bad read. I don't know. But basically what Wesley sees on this is he says, okay, as he's looking at the film here, or as Henry's – Wesley's processing what he just saw. He says, okay, if this guy is going to play this, then I have this open, okay? That's why what I think happened is I think this is a third. And, and again, this is me just speculating – because I can't see his adjustments on his uh, play art. But then you get this play right here, uh, first and 10, and he goes right back to the same play. So everything is identical here. The ball is on the same hash mark. The, the route combo is identical. We get a little more pressure. Um, this is now a hard flat. Outside quarter, middle third. I want to say this is an outside quarter. If you look at just – it's hard to tell – but if you look at how it moves off of the snap, see how it stays a little wider? And the third kind of ran a little more inward. At this point, uh, another thing that's really underrated, 
and this is why I call this a lazy route combination. Watch what happens here to the right side. Watch R1. See how circle gets dead. I mean, he just gets decked. Watch R1. See this right here. See this little bump. Now, if you look at this play, he's 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 over here. He is not influencing this guy at all. He's not. Inf that's why I call this a lazy route combo. He's not influencing him, okay? Because he's on the right side of the field. He's got to be over here to influence this corner. He's not. So this is to me a dead play. We throw the ball away. Wesley's trying to force it in. You probably got a shade outside, either outside quarter or outside third. Night train lane makes the play of the makes the play of the game, play of the tournament, probably play of the year for for Henry. Maybe even the play of Henry's career. Absolutely incredible. And ends up that's huge. It's huge because because Wesley was in a position where it was going to be twenty one to seven the next time Henry touched the ball. Now it's fourteen to seven with only twenty six seconds left in the in the half. Wesley will be lucky to get a field goal on this drive. Um, and so it just completely changed the game. It's literally the biggest play of the tournament, and we get double corner here. So what we're trying to look for is this flat. But really, what's he, and this is where you start to notice. This, this I don't know what that is. I want to say that's a purple, but he just bumps all the time. Anyway, the point being, when Henry sees that tight end go to the corner, guess who's taking it? User's taking it. He just is a little late getting there. Wesley makes a bad, uh, bad uh, pass lead. Doesn't get the blue animation or the blue timing. And now it is second and 10. And we're going to go to this play. Okay, so right here, um, Henry's going to go to a coverage defense. And basically what he does is he shades underneath so he can have the flats. I don't know what this was. I think this was a spy or a three rec. But basically, he gets a curl flat or cloud. He basically playing flooding the left side with zones, and then the user is taking anything across. Takes that, nothing there. Great defense. Now, let's rewind the tape just a smidge here. So notice this little three wreck. Great job of guarding the running back here. This curl flat, great job of guarding the running back here. And this is a hash mark mistake. You can't call this play. Well, I guess you can because you have the fade. Never mind. But look, <laughs> gets completely bumped. That's that. I mean, it's really kind of the story of the first half is is these bumping animations. These bumping animations made it has made a big difference in the game, and um, you just see Wesley's putting route combos in the field that get bumped. See here again, like he's lucky that didn't get bumped. But he got bumped there. So now who's he not going to clear out? He's not going to clear that out. So he's going to try to force feed this. I mean, this is just a terrible throw. This needs to be picked. This, this needs to be picked. If it's picked, if it's picked, it's GG's, my opinion. If that gets intercepted, the game's over. Um, just the way Henry's been playing so far would have been a massive mountain to come back from for Wesley. And the game should be uh, basically over there. So... Anyways, uh, that's the first half. I uh, don't want to go too far into it. We'll do uh, another video breakdown talking about the second half. Thanks for watching the video. And if you want to check out my Patreon to get all my ebooks, it's linked down in the description below.